through the looking glass and what Alice found there. Chapter 5. Wool and Water She called the scarf and looked around. Where is the owner? In another moment the White Queen came running through the wood. Alice went out to meet her with the scarf. I'm very glad I've met you here, Alice said. She helped the White Queen to put her scarf on again. Alice saw that the Queen was very untidy. What has happened to your hair? asked Alice. The brush has got entangled in it, the Queen said, and I lost my comb yesterday. Alice did her best to get the hair into order. You look better now, she said, but really you shouldn't have a maid. You should have a maid. I'll take you with pleasure, the Queen said. Two pence a week and jam every other day. Alice laughed as she said, I don't want to be your maid, and I don't care for jam. It's very good jam, said the Queen. Well, I don't want any today, anyway. No, the Queen said, the rule is jam tomorrow, jam yesterday, but never jam today. I don't understand you, said Alice. That's the effect of living backwards, the Queen said kindly. Living backwards? Oh, things that happen the next week, the Queen said. For instance, now there is the King's messenger. He's in prison now. The trial won't begin till next Wednesday, and of course there hasn't been any crime yet. Perhaps he will never commit the crime, said Alice. That would be better, wouldn't it, the Queen said. Suddenly the Queen began screaming very loudly. Oh, 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 my finger's bleeding, oh, oh, oh. What's the matter, Alice asked. Have you pricked your finger? I haven't pricked it yet, the Queen said, but I will soon. Oh, oh, oh. When are you going to do it, Alice was puzzled. When I touch my scarf again, the poor Queen said, the brooch will prick me. Oh, oh. Be careful, cried Alice, but it was too late. The Queen had pricked her finger. Now you understand the way things happen here, she said to Alice with a smile. But why don't you scream now? Alice asked. I've screamed already, said the Queen. By this time it was getting light. The crow has flown away, I think, said Alice. I'm so glad it's gone. Alice looked at the Queen, then she rubbed her eyes and looked again. She couldn't understand what had happened. Was she in a shop? And was that really? Was it really a sheep that was sitting here? She was in a little dark shop, and there was an old sheep who was sitting in an armchair and knitting. What do you want to buy? the sheep asked. I don't know yet, Alice said very politely. I would like to look all around me first. You can look in front of you and on both sides, said the sheep, but you can't look all around you. You don't have eyes at the back of your head. Alice looked at the shelves. The shop was full of curious things, but something was very strange. Every time she looked at any shelf, that shelf was always empty, but the others were full. Alice looked at the sheep. She was now working with fourteen pairs of needles at once, and Alice was very much surprised. How can she knit with so many? Alice thought to herself. She gets more and more. Can you row? the sheep asked and gave Alice a pair of knitting needles. Yes, a little, but not on land, and not with needles. Alice said, when suddenly the needles turned into oars in her hands, and she understood that they were in a little boat, so Alice had to row. The water is very strange, too, she thought. Every time the oars got in, the, in it, they would hardly come out again. Oh, there are some water lilies, Alice cried. They are so beautiful. Please, maybe wait and pick some, if you don't mind. Alice stopped rowing and tried to get the most beautiful water lilies. I hope the boat won't turn over, she said to herself. Oh, what a lovely water lily, but I can't reach it. But the next moment the water lilies began to fade and lose all their beauty. Real water lilies last very little, and these were dream water lilies, which faded even faster. Suddenly one of the oars got in the water and didn't come out again, and Alice fell down among the water lilies. Now, what do you want to buy? said the sheep. To buy? Alice repeated. The oars and the boat and the river had vanished. She was back again in the little dark shop. I should like to buy an egg, please, she said. How much? Five pence for one, two pence for two, the sheep said. Then two are cheaper than one, Alice said in a surprised tone. Only you must eat them both if you buy two, said the sheep. Then I have one, please, said Alice and put the money on the counter. The sheep took the money and told Alice to get the egg from a shelf. Alice started her way further into the shop. Let me see, is this a chair? Oh, it's got branches. There are trees, and there is a little brook. Well, this is the strangest shop I have ever seen. So she went on, wandering more and more at every step. Everything turned into a tree when she came up to the egg. To the egg. This is the end of chapter 5. Thank you for listening, and subscribe to Kuzdra School.